I designed the Pocket Beagle Talk Dongle to simulate a UART port over CAN bus. It uses an off-the-shelf enclosure and utilizes a standard DB9 for the connector. For the processor, I chose the AN335X from TI. I also chose the Pocket Beagle so that I didn't have to lay out DDR. My board uses spring contacts to connect to the Pocket Beagle's JTAG test points. For the software, I chose to run a bare metal application that uses a custom USB driver that I wrote. When connected, the Pocket Beagle gives you two virtual COM ports and a MSC device which enumerates the SD card. When a trace has been taken, you can just use Windows Explorer to view the logs. You can also update firmware by double clicking the copy to SD for boot.bat. What this does is takes the built binary and then copies it to the SD card and then reboots. When the system reboots, the bootloader will, will load the app and then the firmware will be updated. All of the save settings are saved in the INI file. Anytime that you give a command to update one of the parameters, it's saved in this file. If you had two systems and wanted them to be set up the same, all you would have to do is just copy one INI file to the other system. When you're talking to the system over the virtual COM port, you enter commands. This commands readme tells you all of the available commands to send to the system. To communicate with the system and to enter commands, you use a terminal software like Realterm. The system creates two COM ports. One is for entering commands and the other is for the terminal over CAN function. You can see that when I open the first COM port, it says USB terminal one used for commands. I then enter command CAN get, which tells you all of the CAN bus properties. Since the CAN bus is not connected, there's no traffic and the LED is red. Now CAN bus is connected to the other system that I want to communicate with. The other system is my bike generator project, which you can see in my other videos. Now that CAN bus is connected and there's traffic, the LED turns green. This is the bike generator system in action. The system and performance properties are being sent over CAN bus. Now I'll open up both COM ports. The one on the left is used for commands and the one on the right is used for terminal over CAN. So you can see I just entered in a command to get the terminal over CAN properties. The command shows that the terminal over CAN send CAN ID is hex 500 and the terminal over CAN receive CAN ID is hex 501. The screen on the right is using terminal over CAN to talk to the TBA that's used in the bike generator project. You can see that when we query the version on the right version, it gives you the TBA which is used on the bike project. You can see that this system makes it appear that you're talking over a UART port, but it's actually over CAN. Next, I'll show using an off-the-shelf PCAN dongle. This shows the real-time performance data being sent by the TBA on the bike project that's being output over CAN. In order to debug real-time data, you first start your tracer. We'll let the system log a little bit of data so that we can go over the trace. Once we're satisfied with the amount of data, we then stop the tracer and then save the file. This spits out a raw.trc file. We must then convert the .trc file to a .asc file. This uses external software called pconverter. We must now convert the .asc file to an MDF. You have to load the DBC so that it knows how to convert the raw CAN messages with actual signals that have value. Now that we have the MDF file, we can actually start debugging real-time data. We will now open up the MDF file and just view a few random signals that are in the trace. We are now viewing in the trace the excitation field's power. The end goal for all of those steps was just to get the MDF file from the raw CAN data so that we could view the signals in real time. All of these steps take a long time and introduce a lot of human error. One of the main features of this project is to directly go from the raw CAN data and then spit out an MDF whenever the session is complete. This means that with just the touch of a button, we can go directly from raw CAN data to an MDF. I'll use the system button this time. If you press and hold it, it'll restart the system. We can then just press the button and it'll stop the session and create the MDF file. You can see with this system, the entire MDF generation takes less than a second. 
When the session is complete, the LED blinks green and blue. I will now reset the system and then create another MDF. You can also stop the session by entering in commands. I'll use the button again. Now that the session is complete and the MDF file was generated, we can now open it up in Canopy. We'll open up the same signal, excitation power, and show that the MDF file was created correctly. I will now add a few more signals to the trace and you can see the real-time data. The MDF file spec is not open source, so I had to reverse engineer it. The system also creates and logs the, the raw.trc file and the ASC file shown in the video.